Alright guys, Hatsuko Amic again today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. Some spicy drama here to kick off the final Sunday of the Mage 2 qualifiers. Doug Sins Martin of Boston Bridge were knocked out in a shock fashion in top 32 by a pretty much unknown team in a Challengers Cup last night and then accused said team of cheating. No concrete proof they could come up with, but one of the players they believe was previously banned on CMG for a similar accusation. Very much enjoy to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. Thanks to Prize Picks as well for sponsoring today's content. If you guys are unfamiliar with Prize Picks and haven't had the chance to check out this site yet, it's definitely the way to go for all your daily fancy needs, not just in COD, but across all these sports and esports as well. And they've been leveling up their lines lately, actually. So not just can we choose more or less between maps one to three, but also specifically map one, map two, map three, all this type of stuff. So today I'm thinking I'm going to take Sib more than map one to three. I mean, this guy was out of control yesterday. We'll discuss that series here in a second. And I might close out by looking at map two, the search and destroys. And I I feel like maybe hook over, you know, 6.5 might be the way to go as well. If you guys are looking to get involved, click the link in the description below. Use code breaking point and price pixel match any deposit you make up to the value of $100. Let's crack straight on with things because Seattle Surge were playing last night up against the subliners. Crazy series, really, but this is the thing that can happen with Surge. It's so, like, this team is so weird, to be honest. They won game one. Game two, they lost again. They're now 0-11, I think, so far this season in online search and destroy matches. Absolutely absurd. They do go round 11 is subliners win in fairness new york i think aren't one of the best search and destroy teams in the world right now especially compared to what could be their top opposition going into the major so something to think about for them but yeah surge like honestly they're so good like their potential is so high they just haven't realized that potential against pretty much anyone they played so far especially in the searches but in the respawns they've been good but man sim and pred like how are these guys not making championship sunday and winning like every single event they're just unbelievably good they have series like this so often where both of them just go off on the main stage and I thought honestly looking at this series on paper subliners are so good in their respawns and of course Seattle we know are pretty bad at search and destroy that I knew it was going to take incredible individual brilliance for Surge to win this series and that's basically what happened they go game three Pred just runs this map it seems on Fortress Control as do Seattle usually like New York subliners have been so good in their control so far they played Fortress Control against Surge maybe a mistake on that one of course they're going to be in the winner's bracket anyway at the major but yeah nonetheless I mean Pred wins this gunfight on Priest uh, takes down Skies in the back as well they quickly close out this map 3-1 and then they win the final half point as well so I mean yeah Sib was just absolutely ridiculous as was Pred Mac and Accuracy had 1.0s and a bit of an off day for the subliners for sure Kismet had a pretty rough time of things to be honest as well which you don't usually see but when it does happen then Surge got the job done I mean look at this Pred had 92 kills 10.5k damage Sib had 91 kills 11.5k damage I mean um, yeah sets them up very nicely right and I guess the chance is still there for them to get to the winner's bracket they start out 0-3 finally we're seeing the Seattle I mean it's just like you can't predict what this team's gonna do right because sometimes Sim and Pred have a series where they average a 1.4 KD and what is that plus 52 between the both of them and it's like well what can you do if you're on the other side Kismet drops a 0.6 but you know is what it is so just another Seattle Surge Masterclass but it's just gonna be frustrating if this team goes to the major and performs again because like these guys are, it almost feels like they deserve more than the placings they've got over the last couple of years. They did win an event, of course, last year, Major 3, but it should probably be happening more often, you would imagine. But as Priest says, having off days, you know, it really sucks. How you bounce back is what's important here. And of course, Pred and Sib playing like that is going to play on the minds again over time of Optic, for example, because they didn't show up so much yesterday. There's questions down the line with Optic if they do incredibly well, if they win a Major, if they do well at Champs, will they actually decide to make a move going into next season? Pred, though, might just be putting himself in simply an undeniable position at that point. Quick note as well on that Optic series. Thought this is kind of funny here from the flank Clayster and his sons after that result last night. But also, after Clay tweeted this, we did get a response here from Dashi. You know, you're a beast dog, GG's. So, you know he's kind of saying this a bit tongue in cheek, right? Like, he obviously doesn't believe this fully. I thought it was pretty funny regardless for that quick response. Hopefully they match with the Major. That would certainly be a good time. And also, this from Brian Satslow, kind of crazy, that there's still one organization that uh, Legion have never beaten, and that is Atlanta Phase. 
We'll see if it happens this year. But um, it nearly happened in Cold War as our Caesar saying it was a raid. Search and destroy map five. Paris should have won that year as they were Paris at the time. And um, But FaZe, I think, selling him clutch a crazy 1v2 to keep them alive. And they won that series. But speaking of FaZe and Optic, they played today. The final match of the day going to be an absolute banger more than likely. Hopefully at least. GG's Vegas came out flat today in the respawns. FaZe tomorrow to close out the split. Quickly on FaZe as well, actually, because Sim tweeted this yesterday. I don't know if this is relevant at all, but I know people in the replies were suggesting that this is related to yesterday's video where we talked about Karma and others giving their thoughts on the FaZe team. And okay, has Sim fallen off or the situation? So I don't know if this was Sim kind of responding to that, but we'll see if Sim just turns up and goes out of control from now to the rest of the season. But you know, nonetheless, the statistics do paint the story that we discussed yesterday. Let's talk cheating then, right? Because as Breck says here, can we GA this loudness equalization thing? It's so corny, not making the game fun at all. And this aligns a fair bit with what happened in the Challengers Cup last night with Doug Center Martin. So as he says, final tournament before leaving to Boston. So they wanted to get some good practice here, the Boston Academy guys, up against, uh, you know, pretty much anyone they could play so they could practice some maps they weren't so familiar on going into the Boston events coming up this weekend or next weekend where there'll be a Challengers tourney as well. And Doug and co will be playing with the Boston Academy team trying to do a good job at their home event. Now, Boston Witch Academy got knocked out of this NA Cup 5 in top 32, very surprisingly, because they've been pretty much a top three team in North America lately. There's arguments that, okay, Doug's cost the team and all this, but I think Doug's improved individually as well so far this year and compared to maybe his performance last year as well. Now, they lost to this team of four, and it's kind of funny. This guy's called Aimbot Andrix, given his team's being accused of cheating. Haste, crazy, and cynic. Now, this guy is, I think, the one that's been in question here because basically what Doug goes on to say, I'll share the clips in a second, is that this guy was banned on CMG, Checkmate Gaming, right, for cheating, but um, then rebranded, right? Made a new account, made a new name, and now he's come back from the cheating accusation, no problems at all. And because the websites aren't connected, right, because game battles and, um, and CMG aren't run by the same people, then getting banned on one site doesn't mean you get banned on another. Maybe there's a world in which if you do get banned on CMG, all of a sudden you're, in, you're on kind of like high alert or something for game battles and the guys that actually run the official CDL stuff. But nonetheless, that was where the questions were raised. So yesterday, obviously, um, Boston Academy lost to these guys and Doug was then, you know, trying to accuse these guys of cheating, right? And look, at the end of the day, if someone's cheated before and been banned for it and then, you know, some dodgy stuff starts happening, like you can understand why people are going to be like, okay, this guy, well, it's more likely he's cheating, right? If he's done it before, it's just kind of how things generally tend to go. However, there was no clear evidence here from Doug. I'm pretty sure the guys were like monitor camming as well. And Doug was trying to pull like every trick in the book, right? As Simba says here, like he was trying to talk to the referees, get this guy, you know, get it sorted. And this is the issue, right? And I do feel that if these guys weren't cheating, which, you know, hopefully at least the majority of the team wasn't, then I do feel bad for a lot of these upcoming players because obviously in this case, they might be well teamer with like an accused cheater in the past, which doesn't, which like lowers certain degree of credence. But it does happen nowadays where players that are completely legit, maybe not in this case, but maybe in this case, are actually playing very well, but established names will be like, okay, wow, this guy's beat us out of nowhere. He's a nobody. Like, um, you know, he's got to be cheating type thing, even if there's no clear evidence and it can affect people's reputations. Obviously, in this case, the guy was apparently banned before. So a bit of a different story, maybe. But as Ian says, apparently they had full monitor cams up and comms. So yeah, classic Doug accusing these guys when apparently there was nothing too untoward. But I've got a very brief clip here from Doug's stream last night. For some reason, the clip seemed to disappear from his channel, which is unfortunate. So there's only 15 seconds here when he's absolutely in a rage about the state of affairs that has gone down, discussing how, you know, he's basically on a different level to these guys. And then also he went on the flank a little bit later to discuss, um, you know, exactly where this had come from in the first place and why he was frustrated. Right now I beat them and sent them home. I could download cheats right now online and cheat and still go to land and beat these pros. Broski! Suck my dick, bro. Get hacked on in the challenges or what? Can't confirm or deny, Tom, unfortunately. There's no way of proving a hacker to be real. I didn't really care that we got top 32 in the cup. Like, it doesn't affect anything with our team. It doesn't affect our uh, points. I mean, it affects the points we're going to gain, but it doesn't affect the C we're going to have for the LAN. It's more so that the, the players we played against in the cup were banned on CMG for cheating. And they rebranded themselves to new names. Mm, they rebranded. How'd you figure that one out? It doesn't take a rocket scientist to do it. Yeah, you I mean, see CMG when they made the account, right? themselves to me. Yeah, I mean, you just the, the account's linked. So his actual account on Game Battles is linked with the PlayStation ID, which is also linked to the account on CMG that got banned. He also admitted to getting banned for cheating, and uh, he just rebranded. Well, well, Doug, what about what about X? Can you get your Can you get your guy X to to look into it? 
I'm sure I could get him to. <laughs> and I know a lot of people are going to look at Doug here and understand. I mean, they're like, okay, yeah, Doug used these guys, Doug accused these guys. But in fairness, it was pretty much the entire team, right? Because as Bean says, GG Sicilian and Co. lost in the 2K onto Boston. And, you know, NA is crazy hacky. I just lost to Atlanta Phase in a 2K. I could have swore they didn't play challenges, right? So he's basically saying that the quality of team he just played was unbelievable. It was phase level players. And, um, you know, Bean's obviously very good. So he knows when he's playing good players. And he's like, hang on a second. We just lost to a kind of no name team in the round of 32 of the cup and uh, they were playing like Atlanta phase is there something dodgy going on maybe so maybe they just had a very good day that's also possible as well and even as uh, Beans goes on to say how can you possibly catch cheaters in COD now with no kill cams no theater mode of course which is a big thing back in the day because they can't be bothered to make it anymore and loudness equalization being a thing as well so everyone can hear everyone but it's like um, if they actually are adding cheats on top of that then it's pretty difficult Tina says just ask them if they're cheating bro and even Crimp says Doug's teammate as well you know we're on three year of PC COD there's still no real anti-cheat, right? It just doesn't work particularly well. So yeah, what do you guys think about that? Is Doug in the right? What's the story there? Just a nice bit of juicy drama here to kick off the Sunday. Now let's talk then about the games for today. Very important games at that. Three matches remaining because this is the way the standing is currently aligned. So five teams are guaranteed winners bracket progression. Optic, I'm guessing, can maybe still get the number one seed because um, if Optic beat FaZe and go four and one, they'll be tied with Ultra at four and one. And I'm guessing the tiebreaker there should be the head-to-head -head where Optic did beat Ultra. So if Optic were to beat FaZe, they should get the number one seed. However, if that does happen, there's a chance they play the Mutant is round one. There might be a world in which Optic losing might be beneficial. I don't know. Well, it depends because if they're three and two, they'll play another pretty solid team in the mid-pack, but we'll see. I mean, honestly, if you're Optic, you'd prefer to be number one seed and play Florida right at the end of the day rather than having to play like a Rocker or a Subliners or even a Gorillas maybe right now. But, um, you know, Florida can 2-3-5 you. That's how it sometimes goes. So anyway, these are the teams that are guaranteed to advance. The seeding, though, is not yet determined until today, of course. Ravens are guaranteed to go down, but still things on this final Sunday can affect stuff, right? Because if Surge were to win, if Thieves were to win, they'll both be 2-3, and three, and there'll potentially be a load of 2-3 and three teams where the tiebreakers go crazy. Then you can look at map count percentages, which are important. So I think there's probably too many kind of permutations here to really analyze exactly what could happen at the bottom. But all of these six teams are still in a position where all of these six could start and losers or all of these six could still start in winners so a lot to be determined today and all of these series of course very important especially rocker versus surge which is the first match of the day here so there's some confirmations to be had for the winner's side but also okay we've got boston versus thieves we'll see here in a second so these are the games of the day so surge versus rocker surge need to win and they probably need to win well to start in the winner's bracket because if they don't or if they lose a game five or something because look surge have lost every single search and destroy they've played so far this year they're 0 and 11 in surge but I feel like whenever you start talking about these records, then the records seem to start going the other way. I don't know what it's going to be. Rocker, like, it's so tough to call this series because you can easily say Rocker in five, and that would be a very valid prediction. But then again, Surge looked different in the respawns yesterday. I wouldn't be surprised if they kind of have the, this one week where they just go god mode. And surely they've got to win a Surge at some point. So I think I'm going to take Surge 3-1 here right over Rocker. I haven't been so impressed by Rocker. I feel like for them, Afro just has to be god mode for them to win, and maybe he will be maybe he won't be but he's playing Pred and Co so it's going to be a challenge so I think we're going to take Surge 3-1 there actually then Boston versus Thieves really interesting series right I mean this is an absolute banger I think because Thieves are 1-3 in three. they're looking pretty slow right now to actually start in winners Boston are confirmed Thieves probably have to 3-0 Boston here and just hope that things work out in their favour but even then if they go if they 3-0 Boston they'll be 8-9 map count like is that going to be enough to take them through it might be just about so I think it's going to be tough I think for Thieves here like they've got to be Boston and convincingly and they've got to do so with Kenny just coming back in I'm not really sure I see it to be honest and Thieves are always bad at stage 2 qualifiers generally anyway so I think I'm going to take Boston to win this one maybe in a 3-1 or 3-2 bit confused maybe the mindset will be there in Thieves head that they probably know they have to 3-0 here for the map count stuff and if they lose one map they'll think oh it's chalked guys <laughs> you know whatever we're going to start and lose this maybe that'll happen maybe it won't then Optic versus FaZe I mean look if Optic players they did yesterday they're going to lose the series but FaZe have been suspect in their respawns as well it's a weird series because I think that this could honestly have a game five on it, right? Because FaZe have not been so good in their hard points. Optic have been generally quite good, although yesterday was a bit of an exception up against Vegas. The control probably should be favoring FaZe, but the search and destroys marginally favor Optic. So it's hopefully Optic turn up again and we get a Kraken series here. I'm going to take Optic in a 3-2, I think. I'm hoping it goes game five. I think if it does, I'm going to take Optic to close it out in a 3-2 fashion. So I'm just leaning their way here. I think FaZe might be the better team overall, but for this specific 
specific matchup, depending on the vetoes and stuff, potentially a game five optic win. So some cracking series to come. Very much enjoy to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Thanks to Prize Picks, and I'll see you next time.